Well, just as the nanny state readies for banning all things hot, comes a chilling report on climate change suggesting we are heading into a mini ice age. One of the perennial golden oldies of science denial is the impending ice age myth. According to Frank Hill, associate director of the National Solar Observatory, this is highly unusual and unexpected. What is highly usual and expected is Fox News' distortion of what an actual scientist says about his research. That there is no prediction of any ice age, mini, maxi, little, big, or otherwise. So what kind of expert opinion did Fox News seek out to bolster their blatant perversion of the truth? Perhaps another specialist? A scientist with a different take on the evidence? An unbiased observer, perhaps. For more on the implications of all this, we welcome Competitive Enterprise Institute senior fellow Chris Horner. So, Chris, how reliable are these reports that we may be going into a mini ice age? These seem pretty compelling. Perfectly dressed, perfectly gelled, and almost perfectly tanned. This flack from a tobacco and oil funded Washington think tank gives us yet more of the predictable spin. Wouldn't it be refreshing to hear from an actual scientist who really knew something about the topic? My name is Dan Lubin. I'm a research physicist at the Scripps Institution of Oceanography at the University of California, San Diego. And most recently I've been working on uh, solar variability and climate. In particular, I'm focusing on, on the Maunder Minimum. The Maunder Minimum was a period in the uh, second half of the 17th century and the early 18th century where the climate changed. It cooled in, in the northern hemisphere considerably. And that is the one uh, major climate change that we can uh, attribute mainly to solar forcing, to changes in the solar output. Changes in the sun obviously would have an effect on climate, and scientists have been studying the regular cyclical changes in solar output, a cycle that is well known, as this NASA video shows. This pattern is called the sunspot cycle, and a single cycle lasts for about 11 years, although it can be as short as 8 or as long as 14, and it can vary dramatically in intensity. During one cycle, the number of sunspots, a good indicator of solar activity, goes from low to high and back down to low. Solar minimum represents a period of time when sunspot numbers are relatively low, and solar maximum represents a period when sunspot numbers are relatively high. The current cycle, from which the sun is only now emerging, has been one of the lowest in the past century, a fact that is well known and well documented. Again, NASA. NASA satellites measure the sun's energy, which fluctuates due to a 10 to 12 year cycle. Could increased solar activity be causing global warming? Satellite evidence shows us that the solar cycle has only a slight impact on our planet's temperatures. In fact, even though the last few years have been some of the warmest on record, the sun has been in a deep lull in activity. That means slightly less solar energy has been reaching Earth. From the mid-1600s to the early 1700s, the era now known as the Maunder Minimum, sunspots practically disappeared. The sun was uh, several tenths of a percent dimmer during the Maunder Minimum as compared with today, and uh, climate models show that, that that drives a lot of the climate cooling we know from the historical records that occurred during the Maunder Minimum. Both before and after the Maunder Minimum, most records indicate generally colder conditions than today. Canals in northern Europe froze over often enough to inspire the Hans Brinker stories. And on a few occasions, the Thames River in London was solid enough to support so-called frost fairs. In a review of global climate published during the depths of the most recent deep solar minimum, NASA scientists outlined the possible effects of a continued lull in the sunspot cycle. Let's assume, they wrote, that the solar irradiance does not recover. In that case, 
the negative forcing relative to the mean solar irradiance is equivalent to seven years of CO2 increase at current growth rates. So do not look for a new Little Ice Age. In other words, just seven years of business-as-usual greenhouse emissions totally wipe out even a complete sunspot shutdown. So Dan, uh, there's been some recent research, and I think some of it's been misreported in the media, about the possibility of the, uh, the, uh, the sun going into some kind of a minimum, maybe we're in a minimum right now and we're not quite coming out of it, or perhaps the, the next solar cycle might be much lower than, than the current one. Can you, can you expand on that? Well, I, just on a statistical basis, um, yeah, zero-earth order statistics, we are probably due for some rea reduction in solar irradiance compared to the past 70 or 80 years. Uh, whether that will be a monitor minimum, you know, that, that was the deepest one we know of, that's hard to say. Uh, but the, the bottom line is it will not offset the climate warming that we are causing due to greenhouse gas emissions. The hucksters of climate denial will continue to peddle their poison for as long as the fossil fuel industry keeps calling their tune. For the antidote of real information from real science, you can always come back right here to Climate Denial, Crock of the Week. <laughs>